All right, I finished up a four channel Loconet tortoise switch motor decoder. This particular model is a Arduino Uno based system. It is connected through a Loconet interface board that I made here. Just goes directly to the command station and I also have a throttle plugged in. And it also runs over to our JMRI setup. The four LEDs represent uh, tortoise switch motors. The buttons would be the fascia panel buttons or the control panel buttons. So this decoder will switch, will toggle, kind of hard to see because we're overexposing here. The LEDs are so bright, but you can see that they toggle just like they do on the layout with the Digitrax decoders. We have a red button that is our Loconet status, so anytime there's any kind of Loconet action, in this case I'm varying the throttle, I'll zoom out so you can see that. In this case I'm varying the throttle, and you can see that that's putting action on the Loconet and the light flashes. So anytime there's traffic on the Loconet, that light flashes. Under normal operation, the green light does not come on. We can use our throttle to send a switch command like we normally do, or we can use JMRI to send a switch command. Uh, in the case of this particular system, I have this set up as turnout 17, 18, 19, and 20. So let's go to our throttle and throw switch number 17. One, seven. Uh, we send a thrown command here from the T button, and you'll see switch number one's thrown. You can close it. And it works just the same for, I don't know, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's do switch 20. Switch 20. Thrown. And you can see it does that. And the other two work as well. Uh, we could throw them from here. We could throw them from JMRI. And when I push the buttons on here, they will, as I said before, they'll toggle the outputs. They will also toggle what is up on JMRI as well. So let me zoom in on that. And as I'm throwing... You'll hear the click of the button as I'm throwing 17. You'll see 17 throwing. 18. 19. And 20. So that's our device sending out commands to the LocoNet from our control panel or fascia buttons. Now the really nifty feature of this four channel switch decoder is that you can use your DCC throttle to program the addresses of these four outputs separately. The way we do that is we go to our our mode button here. We hold it in for approximately three seconds. As soon as the green light comes on you let go and the green light is flashing. It's flashing slow indicating that it's waiting for the address of the first decoder. So let's say, let's change these decoder outputs from 17 through, 9, through 20. Let's change them to 29 to 32. Say that's, those are the four switches we want to control by this. So right now it's flashing slow, indicating it's ready for switch number, output number one's address. So we go over to our throttle and we're going to make it uh, the first, we're going to make the first output switch 29. So we send a thrown command from 29, select switch 29, and we just do a thrown command. Now, when I throw that command, you'll see those LEDs flicker, indicating that it has received the command and has written it to, has received that address and has written it to the EEPROM. All right, now it's flashing faster. That means it's ready for the next address. And in our case, it goes sequentially. So after you program the first one, now it wants an address for the second one. So we'll go 30. Uh, when I do the throne command, you'll see them flash again, indicating it's written that to the EEPROM. Now it flashes faster. It's waiting for the third one. So I can go 31. Throne. Flashes again. Now it's flashing really fast, meaning that's the fourth one at once. So let's go 32. Throne. Now when I throw it this time, 
receives the command, program light goes out, red light comes back on indicating we're back in normal run mode. So now we're just back to, we can throw the switches again as normal. However, they are now different addresses. These were, these were uh, <clears throat> responding to 17, 18, 19, and 20, but we just reprogrammed it. So now it's going to respond to 29 through 32. So let's select 29, 20, 9. Now 29 throws the first one. Closed. And so on, right down the line. For what, they'll respond to whatever addresses you've programmed. We're making use of the EEPROM on board the Atmega 328P so that when we turn it off, it saves the addresses. So we're going to go ahead and plug the power back in. Power it up. It's ready to go immediately. Uh, as soon as you power this thing on, it also uh, initializes all the outputs to closed. So if your switches were left thrown, it will automatically close them. All right, so let's go switch. Let's pick... What was this? 29, 30, 31? Let's try 31. That would be this third output. So let's go 31. Thrown. There we go. It's hard to see again because, you know, the overexposure of the video, but there it is. So it saves uh, the turnout addresses in EEPROM, so that you power it down, power it back up. And it uh, is fully programmable right from any DCC controller or even from JMRI. All you got to do is send a switch thrown command. You could use the, the JMRI turnout tool. And there we have it. We no longer need to purchase switch decoders. This is a four channel version. Uh, we can make this any size we want, really. Uh, I would either just have to use an Arduino Mega with more uh, IO pins, or you can use this and just uh, use IO expander chips to get as many inputs and outputs as we want. There we have it. Uh, a $10 four channel Loconet switch decoder.